Over the next 15 minutes, I'm gonna teach you how to start an SMMA or social media marketing agency from the ground up, even as a total beginner. So guys, if you don't know me, my name's Jordan Platten. I own a digital marketing agency here in the UK called the Affluent Agency. There's a link in the description if you wanna check that out. Now we've worked with a number of companies all over the globe from local brick and mortar companies such as restaurants and dentists, all the way through to corporate institutions and we've literally made millions in new revenue for our clients over the last couple of years alone. Now I'm gonna I presume you already know what social media marketing is or SMMA or digital marketing, whatever you want to call it, but it's a service-based business where essentially we work with companies and business owners directly and help them increase their revenue per month through the likes of Facebook ads, Google ads, Instagram ads, whatever kind of digital services you want to offer. But generally speaking, the baseline is kind of Facebook ads, Instagram ads, and also social media management because that is where the shortcomings of most companies fall. Shortcomings of most companies fall. That doesn't really make sense. Most companies suck at social media, basically. And we're gonna help them out and help them increase their revenue, increase their top end, increase their profit margin. And that makes us extremely valuable people. And companies are willing to pay between 1,000 and in some cases 20,000 plus per month for this service. And it's a value-based service, which means we get paid more based on how much value we are providing for our clients. Massively scalable company. And essentially, anybody can start this business. All they need is the know-how, the resilience, and the determination to make shit happen and to go out there and actually sign up clients. But I'm going to be running through that today in this video. But before we get into it, please do make sure you subscribe to my channel if this is the first video of mine you have seen with your notification bell turned on as well. As I'm recording this, we're trying to get 100k subs on YouTube. So I'd be really, really grateful if you could smash that subscribe button for me. Let's get started with this video. Okay, so diving straight in, the first thing we need to understand is what clients do actually reach out to. What businesses are even suitable for our digital marketing service? Now, when we're first starting out, we want to make our lives as easy as possible. We want to get the lowest hanging fruit. And so we want to reach out to single location businesses, not multiple location, multiple offices all over the country, because we don't want to be chasing the business owner who is the decision maker all over the place. We're always going to be reaching out to a business owner or a decision maker directly. And so we want to make sure that they're in one location so it's easy for us to get hold of them. We also want to make sure they're from a proven business model. They have a product or a service which is in demand by the masses. They already have existing customers and existing reviews. They need to have a great reputation because we don't want to be fighting some kind of uphill battle. We want to take a company which is already making money and help them make more money by just getting them in front of the customers which we already know are interested in buying their product or their service. So it has to be a proven model. Avoid startups when you're just starting out because you don't even know whether the product or the service is actually any good. And you can't, you can have the best adverts in the world, but if the product or the service isn't good, it's not going to work, okay? So it has to be a proven model. Now, finally, you're probably thinking, okay, Jordan, can you be a little bit more stiff? If it's specific, which individual industry should I reach out to? Which individual niche? You probably heard that being thrown around. And sure, I could throw some niches out there, but generally speaking, I always say that you should pick your passion. But okay, if we're doing it for the purpose of this video, restaurants, gyms, dentists, fitness, real estate, these are all niches in local, uh, in your local vicinity, which can work really, really well. But you could work with e-commerce companies, info product companies, online coaches, all businesses that require advertisement are businesses which are suitable for a digital marketing service. And there is no one niche which is going to work the best. That's why I always say to people, you should pick your passions. Pick three things that you're passionate about in your private life and reach out to companies in those three industries. That way you're actually going to enjoy the companies you're working with. And trust me, that's a way better way of doing things than just saying, hey, look, I'm just gonna reach out to dentists because some guy on YouTube told me to. It's not worth it. You wanna enjoy your business. So pick your passions when you're reaching out to clients. So that is step number one. Step number two is actually understanding how to reach out to these companies. So we understand vaguely what companies we should reach out to. And by the way, guys, if you've got more than 15 minutes right now, I'm guessing 15 minutes, I don't really know how long this video is gonna go on for. When you've got more than 15 minutes, I already have like a 45 minute video on how to start social media marketing in 2020. So uh, yeah, you can click the link above or below or wherever that is. And you can go watch that after this if you want a much more in-depth video on this topic. Uh, but I wanna make this some kind of some quick fire content for you guys who maybe don't have too much time today. So number two is actually how to reach out to companies. Okay, how are we actually gonna contact them? Now, there's so many people online who say, hey, there's, there's one way of reaching out to social media marketing clients and this is how you can sign them up. Okay, it's just cold calling or it's just ads or it's just reaching out on, on social media. And that simply isn't true. 
I've worked in corporate sales, I've worked in corporate sales for three years before I launched my agency and I've literally closed millions and millions and millions in revenue for the companies that I've worked with. And I never follow just one strategy. It's important when you're reaching out to, you, to your potential clients, you follow a multi-platform strategy. And what I mean by that is you reach out to them by cold calling, you reach out to them by sending an Instagram DM, you reach out to them by a LinkedIn DM, you reach out to them via email, you can send them a quick video audit using a tool called Loom. You reach out to them in a multitude of different ways. And that's because basic human psychology tells us that person A and person B are going to respond to outreach in two completely different ways. It's just like when you reach out to a friend. Some of your friends you know you can call them and they'll pick up the phone. Some of your friends know you'll never answer the phone. Some of your friends you know you've got a message on WhatsApp. Some of them you've got a message on Instagram. So why would you then just message people in one way when you're trying to reach out to them in business? You shouldn't. So how do we actually contact these people? Okay, follow a multi-platform strategy, but how do we actually contact them? Now, the first port of call is that we're not trying to close this person via a message or via a cold call. We want to just arrange a meeting with the business owner. And so when we contact them, we want to be very upfront and open with them. We want to open up with some kind of a compliment, let them know that we're not going to waste their time, and then just simply say to them that you'd love to spend 10 to 15 minutes with them over the next couple of days so you can share some ideas with them on how you can help them increase their revenue. Get straight to the point, but also be very personal. You don't want to just be some random salesman who's just calling up companies and you've just got this scripted monotone voice and there's no personalization. When you reach out to a company, the key is to make sure that you're personal in your approach. You compliment them on something. You don't just critique them. If you're going to critique them because they're doing a terrible job on social media, that's fine. But make sure that you give them a compliment beforehand. Serve them up a shit sandwich. That's a compliment then an insult or a critique, and then a compliment again. You soften the blow. So when we're reaching out to companies, again, we're not trying to close them on the call. We're not trying to close them on a DM. We're trying to arrange a meeting with them. This can either be a physical meeting or this can be a Zoom meeting in the current climate. We're just doing video meetings at the moment because we can't actually physically go and meet companies. So that is step number two. And again, on my channel, I've got loads of videos on in-depth cold calling training, how to write your own script. I've even got videos of me doing live Instagram DM outreach. So make sure you go check them out. Step number three is actually how to close these clients. It's, we've arranged a meeting with them. We've got them in front of us. We're on a video call. How are we actually going to close them? Now, I'd recommend you using a three-part strategy for your meeting. And step number one is actually having a discovery. It's what we call, like to call the discovery stage of the meeting. Step number two is the presentation stage. And step number three is the close. Okay, so there's three parts to this strategy. Now, the first one is called the discovery stage, as I said, and essentially all we are doing is we are just discovering about this company. We are learning about them. We're asking as many questions as we possibly can to find out about where the shortcomings are. We're trying to map out in our head how we can help them to increase their revenue, and also we want to find out how much money they're making, and so we can work out how much we can charge them. So we want to ask questions such as, when they're busy, when they're not so busy. Of course, these are industry specific. What products sell well? What products don't sell well? And why? Okay, we're trying to dig out problems. We want to ask them where their current revenue figures are like. Okay, so what are they currently making? Then we want to ask them where they want to be. What are their goals? So you're making this much, you're making 10 grand a month at the moment. How much do you, you want to be making? How much? 500 grand a month. Okay, so we need to try and get you to somewhere in the middle. Let's be realistic here. We need to try and get you somewhere in the middle. Let's try and aim for around 200,000 a month in the short term, okay? You're getting some emotional attachment to the amount of money that they want to be making within their business. And we're just having a general conversation with that person. Um, and we're just learning as much as we possibly can about them. We also want to make sure that we get them emotionally attached to the figures that we are talking about. We want to reignite a spark within their belly. What we're trying to do here is we're trying to get that primal entrepreneurial spark lit within them, okay? Every business owner, when they launch their business, they're doing it because they have this bigger vision for a life that they want to live, for something that they want to achieve, for this impact they want to have on the world. But at some point, business owners get complacent. They get stagnant. And we need to tell them, hey, look, this is not where you want to be. This is not where, what, or the reason you started off your company in the first place. We want to get them fired up, riled up, and wanting to work with you. And so we want to have that conversation. We want to be one human being speaking to another human being, and we're just trying to help them solve their problems and get them to where they want to be. This isn't a hard sales exercise. This is just a conversational problem-solving exercise. Now, step two of the meeting strategy is the presentation stage. This is where we're going to convey as much value as possible. So we've already kind of built their trust at the start. Now we're going to be 
conveying a lot of value. We're actually going to teach them a little bit about the product or the service that we're offering, okay? So we're going to maybe teach them about Facebook ads. We might teach them about Instagram ads or Google ads, or maybe you're a photographer offering photography services on a monthly retainer, whatever this may be. Social media marketing, a lot of people just say, hey, look, it's just Facebook ads. And that simply isn't true. It can be any service that you want to offer for your clients, depending on your previous experience. And if you don't have any previous experience, I would recommend sticking to Facebook ads, but some people are like web developers. Some people have a a knack for building Shopify stores. Some people have a knack for doing a video recording, okay? Whatever the digital marketing service actually is, there are thousands of different services out there which can help somebody increase revenue. You wanna teach them about that service in the presentation stage. Kind of like a top-down view though. You don't really wanna show them how to do things, but you wanna show them kind of what it is that you wanna do for them and really show them the potential of how much revenue this can make them. You could also show them some kind of testimonials in the stage from previous clients that you've worked with. Now, the final thing that we want to do is actually go for the close. And I always like to think there's there's no real hard close in social media marketing or in, in SMMA. It's just simply about making sure that person is ready to buy. If you've built enough trust in the discovery stage, if you've conveyed enough value in the presentation stage, then the person isn't going to need a close. All you need to simply ask them is, do you think I understand the problems you're facing as a business? Yes. And are you ready to take the next step? Yes. Okay, great. You've got a couple of yeses. You could even ask them, do you think I have the skills needed to help you solve these problems? Yes. And you simply then state your price, okay? I would always recommend you charging a service charge, a fixed service charge for your clients when you're first starting out of around $500 to $1,000, okay? Or $500 to 1,000 pounds. You don't wanna get greedy when you're first starting out. If you aim for around the 1,000 pound mark, you're gonna be you're gonna be pretty good, okay? Right? When you're first starting a business, getting paid one thousand pounds for anything is gonna feel great, okay? You do not want to be overcharging. I see so many people that are going in like two, five, ten thousand on their first client. You don't have any reputation. You don't have existing testimonials. Don't get greedy. Wait for that further down the line when you're actually somebody of value. Go in with a modest price, and then always, 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 if your core offer is advertising, then make sure you state the budget as well. You don't want the client to think that their advertising spend is included within your service charge. So for example, you could say something like, so our service charge for our Facebook ad service is £1,000 per month, and I'd expect you to spend £1,000 a month on advertising as well. Okay, so on to step four. This is the step that most people are scared of when they're first starting out, is how to get results for your clients. And I'm gonna be using Facebook ads as an example because that's still my core service. And I want you to know that when I first launched my agency, I was terrified because I had no clue how to run Facebook ads, like no clue whatsoever. In fact, I don't recommend you doing this, but when I signed my first client, I still had no clue. And Richard Branson has this quote, he says, if you ever get offered an opportunity and you don't know how to fulfill it, say yes and worry about it afterwards or teach yourself afterwards or something along them lines. And that's exactly what I did. I tested, I ran Google, I I looked on Google, I watched YouTube videos, I literally just immersed myself in Facebook ads until I became amazing at them. And I learned very, very quickly. You'll be surprised how quickly you can learn a new skill. And by the way, if you want to offer Facebook ads as your core service, which I would recommend, then click the link above. Shameless plug. I've got a full video which teaches you from A to Z how to start running Facebook ads today. Literally everything, nothing left unturned, okay? We cover how to set up your business manager, how to start running ads, what kind of creative you should use. So make sure you go check out that video after this. Um, But kind of I'll break down a basic Facebook ad strategy for you if you are using that. The first thing you want to do is kind of get the lowest hanging fruit, okay? Pick the lowest hanging fruit. You want to use the information that we have learned in the discovery stage of our meeting. What client, what services sell, what, what don't sell well, what products sell well, what that don't sell well and why, okay? And we want to set up retargeting adverts straight away. Retargeting adverts are essentially adverts which are retargeting people who are already visiting our potential client's website. These are the people who are most likely to purchase, okay? It's like if we go on a on Nike and we look at a pair of trainers, we go on Facebook and all of a sudden Facebook has stalked us and that same pair of trainers looking at us in the evening, we remembered that we were going to buy them and we then go and purchase them. That's what we want to do. And we want to start making our clients money from day one because it means that we look really good and it gives us a lot more scope when it comes to actually testing and it allows us to that allows us to make mistakes with the rest of our strategy so we can test a lot more. 
Again, following suit with getting the lowest hanging fruit, we then want to run cold adverts to the best selling products. We want to find the products or the services which are best selling, and we ask our client which they are, and we start running ads to those products or services, again, so we know that we can get in quick return on investment for our clients. Now, once we've done that, we can spend the rest of our budget on the really cold stuff. We can try and sell the products or the service which aren't selling so well, the ones that the client really wants to focus on, but only after we've picked the lowest hanging fruit and we're already getting return on investment because it gives us a lot more wiggle room. As I said though, guys, it's really hard for me to really explain in depth how to get results for your clients right now. So make sure you go check out that other video where I'm gonna give you a lot more context on Facebook ads and how to use them for your clients. So there. We have it. That's. <laughs> I think this has gone over 15 minutes, to be honest. So apologies. It's really hard to get it all into one video. But I wanted to create a kind of short fire content for those of you that don't have all the time in the world right now. But an SMMA is an incredibly lucrative business model. SMMA in general. Uh, or just owning a digital marketing agency. I only use the term SMMA because that's what people widely recognize. It's incredibly scalable as well. You can easily be earning six figures or multiple six figures just on your own as a full-time person, but then at that stage, you're making enough revenue to warrant hiring an ads person who can fulfill all of your services for you or hiring somebody to fulfill whatever digital marketing service you're offering. And then you can focus on just building the business. And SMMA can be scaled up to seven figures if you have the willpower to succeed, but it's not easy. It's not a get rich quick scheme. It's not something which you're just gonna start today and be making six figures in a couple of weeks time. You're gonna have to graft, you're gonna have to make sure you put in the time and you're gonna have to make sure over everything you stick to your initial sales targets when you first start off. That you say to yourself, hey look, I'm gonna reach out to 10 or 20 new companies per day. And you do that until you hit the revenue point that you want to reach. So guys, I'm gonna round up this video because I'm conscious that we've really kind of gone on today. And I hope that you, um, I hope that we've, we've linked up all these other videos which, which you can check out on social media marketing. There's so many other on my channel. I invite you over to the channel to check out my content. I pride myself on giving more away for free than other people have you pay for. So yeah, I think that's it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all very, very soon. Cheers.